she found herself corrupted by forgiving her spouse. I met this woman, I don't know, it's been some years now. And when I met her, soon after I met her husband, and I just discerned this that this dude was very deceitful. I was like, dude is deceitful. Like something up with dude. I have not witnessed it with my own eyes. I have no proof. I just discern it. Something is off with this dude. And it's just not my place to tell her that because we're not friends. I just met her. I don't really know her. You know, there's some people in my life they know me to be a very discerning person. So they'll be like, if Zara discern that, I better check that. You know, like I've proven myself over a period of time. So they honor that. I don't know her and I'm not one to just interject myself in somebody's life and start telling them about themselves and what's going on and what's happening. I'm just not that person. So we talked here and there, you know, I would see her sometimes. We we started, we exchanged phone numbers. She would text me sometimes. We would text back and forth. We would go to lunch sometimes. We started hanging out. Um, some time passed and she starts telling me how her husband is um, yoked up in this partnership uh, with a few people and how he's lying in order to ha keep money, have money from them. Um, and that's how he gets money. And you know, I'm like, okay, check, discernment was right. And I'm like, okay, I think I'ma just tell her what I had discerned way, way back when I first met her. You have people's lives and hearts at stake. You know, like p other people are involved in, in what he's doing. And she's like, you know, I know, but he's my husband. I have to honor him. I have to forgive him. And I'm like, well, how are you gonna forgive somebody who's not even repenting about what they're doing and they're actively sinning? And she's like, you know, every day I just try to forgive him for what he does. And I'm like, but we can't just give forgiveness without repentance. It, it, it requires both in order to, for it to actually be forgiveness. She's like, yeah, but I, you know, that's not how I've been taught. You know, I have told him what he's doing. I feel like it is wrong, but I can't be responsible for him. Like, how am I going to be responsible for what he does? Like I try to hold him accountable, but if he doesn't listen, like, what am I supposed to do? I said, I can't tell you what to do, but I will tell you, you a co-signer to that wickedness if you don't say something and if he doesn't repent you don't move accordingly you have to change your the dynamic of your marriage when you're dealing with someone who's actively participating in wickedness you are aware of it you won't say anything and other people's lives are at stake and you just keep forgiving him when he's not repentant because he's actively participating in this thing you had to change your boundaries. You have to change how you deal with him. You might have to have some separation for, for a bit because how does anyone change if you don't hold them accountable to any kind of standard? Like if you don't say anything, you know what he's doing, you know that he's lying and you stand by, you're a co-signer, you're an ally in what he's doing. You're gonna be considered a part of his wickedness because you know when you're aware and you're standing by his side in it. And she just didn't see it like that. She was just like, when it comes to that, I'm separate from him. We're, we're married and we're one, but I'm separate because I'm not doing what he's doing. And I'm like, but you are doing what he's doing. If you know what he's doing, you won't do anything about it. And you won't say anything about it. And she's like, but I did tell him. And I'm like, but if you told him and you won't, he won't let you hold him accountable, then you still an ally. You still a co-signer because you're not doing nothing about the fact that he won't do nothing about it. <laughs> if that makes sense. Right? So, um, she was like, I think it's my job to just forgive him because we all sin. <sighs> this is what I want to point out to y'all. So in Proverbs 18, 5, you will see a word called nasal in Hebrew. Nasal. It's Strong's H5375. And the English version, me, version uh, means to accept. Now, I put up a post on my YouTube community tab and my Instagram a while ago. And in that post, I said, it is not good to respect the wicked. It's not a good thing because we just give our respect to everybody. You got to honor and respect your parents. You got to honor and respect your husband. You got to do the respect, respect, respect. And respect is not for everybody. So I pulled that scripture out. It is not good to respect the wicked. The King James Version said it is not good to accept the wicked. Did you know when you study that word, in addition to not respecting the wicked, accepting the wicked guess what else is on that list 
forgiving the wicked. You see it right there. They saw. To accept means to forgive, extol, suffer with, obtain, magnify, marry, swear. All these things is what that, that means. Prior to 18.5, which we'll see today, it says do not accept. So you are not supposed to forgive the wicked. Sorry, that's such a strong word to just call somebody wicked. Well, I looked it up. Did, did you look up what wicked means? I'm is when you make a pattern of doing wrong. That's what wicked, you wicked. You have a pattern of doing wrong. Okay? And where does that lead? When a person makes a pattern of doing wrong. Unrepentance. What does unrepentance lead to? Reprobate state. What is a reprobate state? You can't even come out of what you're in. This is why Yah says, when you see a wicked person who makes a pattern out of doing wrong, getting out of control, you need to recognize they are a malignant growth. They are cancerous. So you are not supposed to forgive the wicked. Because what happens when we do that? We not only become immoral, we not only get become corrupt, but we decline and hold out on the just, which is what she was doing. And trying to cover the wickedness of her husband and forgiving him in his active wickedness and unrepentance, she is leaving a very sensitive group of people exposed to injustice. And that's what we do when we forgive wicked people so like i said forgiveness can be immoral because why are you giving forgiveness to a wicked person who is in a sin actively participating in it and ain't repentant now if they're repentant and they are seeking to restore because he is two parts of repentance okay you got to be have sorrow in your heart and you also have to seek restoration for what the damage that you cause if you ain't that doing that, you ain't repentant. Wicked people who are not repentant, because some per a person could be wicked and be transformed and repent, right? But we're not supposed to be giving that to them until they do. So a wicked person who is unrepentant don't deserve forgiveness. If we do it, we're being immoral. That immorality will corrupt us. Today. This woman is still standing side by side with that man, misleading people. I know the lies. I'm aware of the lies. I know them. And she's still standing by his side and now she's corrupt. I don't even, when I look in her eyes, I don't know her, I haven't talked to her in years. I don't know her like who she is now. Cause she's changed, she's been corrupted by, by, by her silence and by forgiving a wicked person. And, and riding with him in his wickedness. It has now corrupted her and now she is wicked too. And say something just cross paths and I see her eyes, I look in her eyes and she's not there anymore. The woman that I knew. There's a purity that gets tainted because what does it say about the word? Evil communications corrupts. It corrupts, she's corrupt now. All because she was forgiving her unrepentant husband. And now look where she is. So forgiveness can be immoral. We got to be careful with who we give our forgiveness to. And some people are like, girl, you crazy. Forgiveness is not immoral. That is the backbone. That is the foundation of religion, of Christianity. You're right. It is. <laughs> That's why I don't mess with religion like that. But okay. Um, forgiveness can be immoral if they are not repentant to the place where there is sorrow in their heart and they want to restore the wrong. And that is demonstrated over a period of time, not with lip service and then next week, I believe you, no. The greater the degree of the offense, the greater the degree of proving. The longer it's gonna take you to prove, okay? So if that's not happening and you extend forgiveness, it is immoral. Mm -hmm.